Swing it and sword it. Let's get that booty. What's up, y'all? It's another episode of Slim Cogcast, and it is I, Slim Cognito. What's good, y'all? I gotta put y'all up on some stuff. We got some good news. Not a lot of news, but some good news this week. Boy, let me tell you. I feel amazing. I have a better sleep schedule. I have been waking up at like 3, 4 a.m. and going to bed stupid early. But it feel good. And I kind of like it. I kind of miss it. And it's great. So, first of all, I want to tell y'all about what I've been watching this past weekend. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you would already know that this past weekend I, how do you say, I caved in to the hype, but only when the hype died down. And that's why I prefer to watch things. You know what I mean? Sometimes I like to watch things while it's hyped up, but it's better to watch it while everybody's already gotten past memeing about it and things like that. So I can hear some real good feedback on it. And boy, I gotta tell you, I've been enjoying perusing around YouTube, seeing what everybody got to say about it, this, then the third. But um, it's time for me to give my opinion on Squid Game, the Netflix original series. And apparently it is basically, I won't call it dystopian because it's more modern, which is actually too similar and almost apt to describe it as that. So that's kind of, you know, scary. But yeah, um, it's basically about modern day society in Korea where people are in debt to their eyeballs whether they've been laid off from a job or that they're trying to keep a certain status in order to be a prodigy and big bragging statement for their mother or whether they're just come across bad mis misunderstood and unfortunate events in life and they have thousands upon millions of dollars in debt or excuse me in won not US dollars, but here there is a group of people who are in debt that have signed away their physical rights that have to now by choice take place or excuse me, take part in a game that would incentivize them by winning a cash prize that is at least, I think they said what, 10 million per person or something like that or, or 2 million something. I don't know, but there's a lot of money per person rides on the prize money and every person that loses, the pot grows bigger with that amount. And if you lose, it means literal death. It's a life or death type of thing. But also, if you were to opt out, everyone goes home with nothing and the families of those who died in the process get the money split evenly. Now, there's a lot of things in this that not only touches on morality, but also uh, economic despair. And you know, the, the latest thing that's going on with how you know everyone who's trying to make a way usually cannot, and how everything is literally up to chance and luck, when really those that would you know look down on others because they have a little success would oftentimes uh, look at it as, oh, they just were incompetent or this or that, but honestly it kind of exposes was it it makes you question it's a, it's a head scratcher it makes you question is a person's success dependent upon the personality or is it dependent upon their luck and the the what they were born here with or just the fact that they had something fall in their lap or etc you know because there was every creed of person every personality that you could see in everyday life, you know what I'm saying? At least the most common ones that you could see was included in this cast of characters that ended up in this game. And you could either take that as there are a large amount of personalities that could become failures in this economic, um, I guess you say structure that we have in the world with debt and whatnot, or you could read it as literally anybody could end up in poverty. So I guess it's up to you. I guess it's up for interpretation. They didn't really touch on that, but these are the things that I'm taking from it and I'm not really sitting on a hard line stance, but rather just seeing what the underlying context could offer. Now, here's the thing about this whole show and we'll get into spoiler territory in a moment, 
but I'm just gonna talk about the first episode before we get into the spoilers. Now, as far as the first episode does, it really establishes the characters, shows their backstories and their tragedies and lets you be familiar with them and the choices that they make. And all of the choices made make sense. Like there's no, there's not enough for the main character, um, June, I think his name was, um, there's no or not enough of a system or you know what I'm saying a path for those that become broken men or those who have offered so much to a company and get laid off or showing examples of how dirty business can be for people who may be like illegal immigrants and they're employed you don't you're not exactly obligated to pay them under the law so you could just lie and you know hold off their paycheck in order to get free labor or you could just you know set up a ponzi or pyramid scheme and then end up blaming all your employees for the uh, faulty results therefore saving the company's ass but screwing over all of the working people and it sucks this is pretty sad it's it's, it's actually pretty you know the, the it's one of the things that's the modern trend in cinema in general and especially in our shows and and movies is that it's better to make your villains real life villains rather than making up one because why make up a villain like the Joker when we have real villains? And it's 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 a funny twist because back in the 90s, 2000s, 80s, 70s, 60s, old villains in shows are oftentimes like, you know, comic book and, and Saturday morning cartoon fashion where they, I just wanna do bad things. But you start to see the trend of where the Joker's writing and other villains like him, you know, from other works uh, before comics, of course, you know, Shakespearean villains and antagonists who have justified actions and choices based on human emotion, but it's still an act of evil. And now we get to the point where now our society as a whole, we really more sympathize with the Joker more than Batman. Batman is a preppy, rich guy who was born into his wealth. He may not be a bad person at heart or, you know, from the ground up fundamentally, but he really don't have to want for nothing. And that's one of the biggest things that the majority of the people cannot relate it. They can't relate to. I, even me as my favorite hero being Batman, I never could relate to the fact that, well, he's rich. So he's able to focus on doing all these other things. Meanwhile, I got to make a living. I can't be Bruce Wayne because I keep having to make a living. <laughs> and that's where most of everybody's time and every day is consumed by. Especially when you're making a living is barely enough to live. Well, you don't have enough time in the day to do much else. And when you're broken, when you're burnt out and overworked and underappreciated and underpaid, well, what do you expect others to do aside from retreat within or just give up? And there's and it's not easy to keep going. And that's the biggest thing that really shines through with squid game i feel one of the things my initial uh critique was that i was worried that it would just be another ripoff of battle royale it seems and they're going to be doing these things and everybody's going to have to kill each other to survive and try to win and blah 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 but it really dawned on me as i watched it i said well they didn't rest on their laurels and just make another battle royale clone you know they didn't just rehash what they knew people already liked they add some new and unique ideas and they were willing to put a subplot of you know you're expecting that the whole thing is going to be blown open and ruined so before we get into that part of it um let's go ahead and dive into spoiler territory now right here here are the spoilers um if you're looking for the news segment and you still haven't seen the show go ahead and check out the show please go ahead and watch it um, this is the one of the few times that the mass populace had a uh, good taste and I respect it. Um, I it, it really did put me through some emotional turmoil and I was like, yo, fuck this show. Yo, this shit's making me bad. Yo, what's going on? Ah, I can't take it. But 
It did what it was supposed to do cinematically. And as a person who aspired to be a cinematographer at one point in his life, I really do respect what they did and the consistency that they the consistency that they had with the cinematography. The editing perfect, the lighting was great, and the setting design, actually the the people who designed the sets are the real MVPs because there's like some weird MC Escher, Willy Wonka mix of, you know, stairs and hallways to get around inside the place. And you end up in this weird childlike setting and it's such a harsh disposition, you know, putting it, you know, it, it's, it's a harsh contrast, excuse me. It's a harsh contrast. Well, I guess either or could be true. I'll, I'll go with contrast though. I feel more comfortable using that word to describe it, but it's such a harsh contrast compared to the subject matter and the situation and setting that the characters are in. You're like, wow, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, it it, it throws you between seeing a human express themselves in their inner child manner or in their animalistic survival instinct manner like it's it's like it takes you through it and i respect that most people would not combine these themes with one another because they usually are at war instead of complimenting one another but because they are at war it complements one another because the overall topic is the diverse and many faces and masks and hats of humanity and it's so fucking good in that right that's a great concept from the ground up and i feel like out of all the videos that i've seen and listened to and the reviews and opinions i haven't heard anyone touch on this fact or even realize this much so i'll say that this is my perspective but it feels pretty accurate for me to describe it as such but maybe i just want to be right who fucking knows that's humanity anyway the point that I'm getting at is, is that our main character, Yoon, was so in touch with his childlike heart of gold. He still had a heart of gold, but because of his big heart, he could not weather the storm of being out there facing other people of humanity that have been changed by the world. And when it comes to just a young girl that's willing to pickpocket him, when he finally comes upon some little fortune, or if it comes to some mafia guy who uses his brawn to just overcome everything and isn't afraid to kill at the drop of a hat or whether it's some other guy who went to college and got himself in the eyeballs of debt through stocks and options and and all these other things to the point where he wanted to hold on to his prestige so much that he sold off the ownership of his own mother's store without her knowing and she thinks that he's a great amazing man that's big and done all these things became successful so the thing that i just want to drive home here is just that this story tells you the value of what it means to be a good person in humanity without rewarding the vile behaviors of humanity meaning one of the characters or the most key pivotal characters of the show is um what was his name oh oh il nam i think his name was and il nam son was more well not japanese i'll, I'll just say il nam il nam is more of a um how do you say he's the willy wonka here and but they did a nice spin on it which was very welcome to me. I, Cause one of the things about being in the cinema, you go from just wanting a, wow, a story to wow you. And after so long, you just want a story to do something that you've never seen before. And having the spectator among, huge spoiler, having the spectator and creator among the players is amazing. Now, one of the thing that it is is that the this dude knew all of those games and they were based off of the games he used to play as a kid and it's super smart but it's also mixed in with some how do you say twists but the biggest thing that got me and i'm surprised that the only person that touched on this was matt pat but the whole time i was watching i was like 
why didn't they just stack the beds together and just get the money out of the ball like you could literally take those bunk beds and stack them in such a way where it could make a ladder of sorts and you could just break down the ball itself just by sheer like body weight and split the money or take what you can and then everybody mount up together and leave you know and whoever can make it out with it all gets it all like or ever you know what i mean like or just get out in general i mean who knows there were so many solutions that i saw that they could have easily gotten themselves out of it but oh well you know what i mean it's it just seems like they they were there it, when humans are met with a bunch of how can you say little detail they have to you have to fill in those details with assumptions and leaving a lot to be you know misinterpreted but they would say like for example one of the games that did bother me the most was um what was it um uh, not the one with the melted sugar but i felt like every every time i came up with an idea as i watched it i saw one of the uh contestants doing that idea and i was like i like that that means they thought through the scene and they know what people would have come up with what ideas they would have come up with you know from person to person at the same time i feel like there was this one game what was it which one was it yes the one with the marbles okay so the the game with the marbles I feel like they got so desperate that it was ridiculous because it would have simply meant that all they had to fucking do was make a game where both can win. It would have been that simple. That should have because there was no stipulation like only one player may win. There was no stipulation where only one person could walk away from this. So I feel like it's literally what this really exposed to me, what this show repeatedly exposed to me is that people oftentimes don't try to find solutions that will benefit all, but mostly benefit themselves. And that's the bigger issue, honestly. And I think that's the reason why good people, people who are good hearted, that can keep their, you know, their kindness and willing to help and, you know, their uh, charity are the ones that actually get ahead because you can't you cannot think that like if, if look at the cycle of things what makes people into assholes is because they were bullied when they were younger but they hold on to that hate until they get older and now they hate everyone who didn't bully them or what makes you know most villains people who hold on to uh, bad things that have happened to them and have never been able to heal from it but those who still find a reason to smile you know even though they are broke even though they are in poverty even though they are unfortunate with dating if you still find a reason to smile and be a positive force and send positive vibes you literally are the champion that everybody wants and needs like think about it if everyone's like destitute and down in the dumps and despaired to death and they're sad every, that means they all need something good or positive in their life even jobs suffer from finding good work and good help because they need somebody that's willing to give them that time for that amount of money that they're supposed to be compensating them for but it's about the kindness you have to give what you expect and oftentimes we may not but that's just because you can't get that back from the people you expect the kindness that Gihun was willing to give to player one aka O Il Nam was rewarded handsomely because it was the hardest thing to do in the entire competition which is being considerate and kind to others because throughout the entire thing, survival is oftentimes um, con the connotation of the word survival is oftentimes accompanied with the assumption that it means everyone else must die so that I may live or everyone else must lose so that I may win. And that's the biggest issue. Whereas it's really more just the gladiator uh, uh, Rome type of games where most people don't look at a game as a means of 
it was fun to play the game and that's the reward. Or it was fun that I had a chance to win and I can win the next one. It's one of the biggest reasons why gaming is such an appealing thing is because most things in life is often implied that you got one chance at this job, you got one chance at this interview, you got one chance at this college attempt and you get one chance with this degree. And it's like, you know, most things in life is, is centered around this one chance, one chance, one chance thing. But the thing with humans is that we do not, cannot, and oftentimes will not perform perfectly and consistently. You know what does do that? Robots and machines. And even they can it sometimes because guess what? Things break down, code glitches out, stuff happens. And this is the biggest thing that it exposes is that most of those humans fell on hard times because shit happened most of those people are there because shit happened one of my key favorite scenes is when his friend um the snu uh graduate came at him at the end of the game saying you had no reason to push that man on that bridge why did you kill him that was wrong and he was like shut up you don't know what it was like imagine if you was up there how comfortable it was for you to be back there blah blah blah, blah. he's like but yo he's like this is your problem um, Gihan, you're always too nice, and this is why you're such a loser. And it was like, I know you are not trying to high road me, so you so much better than me, huh, Mr. Good Degree and Service Guy? Yeah, look at you, so smart, and you right here in the squid game with me, dog. Worse in debt than I am, dog. And that's the biggest, most humbling thing that a lot of people seem to forget because. I, I like uh, it, uh, the fact that they put they were willing to put a character who graduated and is moved on, but his life's not better. He's just lying to his parents because that shit is some real shit, especially when it's like Facebook and stuff. You'll have people who just go like, oh, I graduated and the graduation pictures go around everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But then life hit and it'd be like, OK, find a job in your field, being paid worth your education etc 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 and all these other things come along and we wish the best for them hope the best for them you know hope no misfortune but it'd be a lot of people that move away from home and lie to their mom about things are going so well and, and and then they turn the phone off and they eating a pack of noodles so it's like yo this type of shit has a cause and effect on things around you your mama's out there you know telling all these people these things and all this and that but if you were to be imagine if he would be real with his mom Oh, I'm going through it, ma. It's real bad out here, but I'm going to make it. I'm trying. I'm not going to give up. She probably could have met somebody who came to her shop that wanted to buy some fish, and they probably could have been a financial advisor or a lawyer or something and that was single and willing to marry, and they come together. Oh, I found this nice girl. She's a lawyer. She wants to talk to you, and then you get talked into it, and it turns out she can actually help you and make a better life. And what your line of work can make a better life for her, etc. So you know, saying like, there's possibilities. Right here, what I'm talking sounds like a bunch of old. Oh, this is just assumption of bigger. You know, and he's just living in a uh, you know fantasy of over overly optimistic or whatnot. But no, it's not that. It's just that we shy away from optimism because we live in our pessimism and our expectancy for things to go worse oftentimes is the reason why it does go worse because we never put any energy or effort toward trying to make it better because we don't think of better things i've witnessed it i've done it in life myself i know when we always assume that the worst could happen nine times out of ten it can and might so you have to consider some things being more positive i might get fired from my job but guess what i might get a better job after this job if this job is paying me shit, then maybe something better will come because I've been fired from some jobs for some bullshit, but I've gotten better in the future where I've been in jobs with some terrible people and some horrible people and thought I had to sit there and put up with the disrespect and the shit talk and the, and the, and the demeaning and the bullying, you know what I'm saying, from adult people acting like children, but it turns out that you might trip upon something better and so we have to be in that moment of optimism as much as if not more than our willingness to be pessimistic because we keep misbranding pessimism with being a realist now i'm gonna um i'm gonna hop off that because i don't want to run on there too long and we're 25 minutes in so i'm gonna just go ahead and um we're gonna 
move past it and if you like any of the stuff that I was just talking about and the things the takeaways that I got from the show I highly recommend that you give it a shot because it really does put together the things that most people would forget about everyday life and they did a great job I respect it good job to the writers and the cinematographers the, the oh my the, con the consistency the consistency right down to the masks that the soldiers wore the consistency with the and also it's been a, a hell of a I noticed and, and I said this when I was watching it but then Twitter had the same idea somebody on Twitter and it was like yo I was watching it and when we found out what the VIPs were that wanted to watch the final rounds of the game I was like yo how come every time human beings lives are on the line and they're suffering from debt the people who are running the show and enjoying it and watching it like it's a TV is a bunch of white people wearing masks like it's crazy but hey I don't mean to make this a race thing it's just noticing the pattern from um from the purge and all these other you know what I'm saying similar uh, works I think it was like two others that uh, a friend uh, brought to my attention after I brought that up and I was like yo this really is a pattern then but anyway um yeah so that's the thing we not and I, I guess I'll have to put a disclaimer here since this is going out on YouTube not saying that the pattern is exposing that all white people are evil just some of y'all <laughs> okay so anyway <laughs> um moving on uh squid game great watch uh i feel like the final scenes were kind of unnecessary and the very final scene i feel like might have been forced by netflix to secure a sequel season so hey but whatever i guess if it's consistent with its quality then i'll be there to tune in and i enjoyed it um eight out of ten eight and a half hard to decide yeah Eight and a half out of ten. Eight and a half out of ten. Good diverse characters. Extra points for including a man from Pakistan, a Pakistani man, and him having certain injuries and whatnot, and him being, you know, an illegal alien in Korea. Like, that's good stuff. I like to see that. I want to see more of that. That's nice. It's incredible. Great. So anyway. Next, uh, what we've been playing over on the channel uh, lately, uh, I started the hard mode of Dread. We had some technical difficulties, so I'm going to leave that to the side um, because um, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like playing recent games in that manner uh, for the most part. And I want to enjoy Metroid the way it should be. But even then, you know, given people's experiences with the Switch product, I don't know. But um, I'm not going to say no more on that. But there were technical difficulties, so I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that run down. I'm going to leave it be. And next is um, we started playing The Messenger. Um, this will be my second ever uh, run of The Messenger. Uh, we streamed it like a year and a half ago. And we did the Platinum Trophy. And it was super good. Very fun. I enjoyed it myself a lot and you guys seem to be enjoying seeing me you know run through it and having my fun i gotta i gotta play it it's it's so good i can't wait to continue it tomorrow and uh, i will see y'all the tuesday we will pick it back up most likely we will beat the game and uh yeah just tune in if you would like to see some messenger playthroughs that's with you know with some skill with some good skill you know what i'm saying going ham and uh i'll be there hope you will be too other than that, uh, after the messenger, I believe we're going to knock out some more things from the hard drive that I need to get finished with because there's some things I got installed that I want to kind of maybe uninstall. One of those things, may, we're going to be... It's between No More Heroes 1 and 2 and Psychonauts 2. And we're going to start a poll. And that poll will be on Twitter. So y'all let me know what you would like to see and we'll decide from there. So, uh, aside from that, everything good. Now, and with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the news, which is first thing on the docket, the most hype thing that I read today. Excuse the chair. Um, my boy, The Flow, our boy, The Flow Zero, 
as some will call him, or the flow. Well, the flow zero is his uh, Twitter tag, but um, he actually cracked the PS5 OS, and he now has access to the developer tools, and that's dope. This is big news, um, mostly because we haven't really seen. You know, this doesn't exactly mean that he's going to be like, you know, oh, there's going to be hacks and blah, 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 blah. Like, no, that's not exactly what it means. But it just means that um, he has found an exploit in the security that has allowed him to get in to the developer side of options in the OS. And that's a first step of many, but it's not an official step until he decides to release it. He has no plans for disclosing it, and there's no ETA as stated in his own tweet, but that means that it's possible seeing him do so, which is always going to be possible. But yeah, the, we haven't often seen this happen so quickly. And the PS5 is, wait a minute, damn, the PS5 is a year old, officially. That's crazy. Okay, so yeah, so the PS5 has been out for a year now, and uh, this is one of the... I, I, was it the Dreamcast was the quickest um, exploited um, console? I'm not sure. I think so. But uh, this is rather quick for a modern day console that supposedly has the security necessary. We spent millions on um, you know <laughs> security engineers to make sure that um, it cannot be exploited. But yeah, here we are. The guy is in a savant. He's been he's done so much and he's offered a lot to the community and we love him for it. Um, so yeah, if you want to check out those, there are two links uh, to two separate uh, tweets about it and you can go ahead and uh, check that out over there. But this is official as of uh, 13 or 14 hours ago, basically yesterday, and uh, he found his way in. Hello world. We are here, I guess you could say, but not not literal okay i probably shouldn't have said that okay but well, never mind the point that i'm getting at is hey uh, ladies and gentlemen he, he got him um next thing over on the docket at nintendolife.com blood, 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 blood rain one and two revamp trailer and file size revealed the trailer for blood rain one and two has been released apparently it's going to be a Physical run for Switch, PS4, and PS5. These games will be separate from Blood Rain 1 and 2, which I don't like. Um, but the only thing that they'll be changing is higher resolutions and some better environmental effects and, like, you know, particle effects. Now, to be fair, uh, given the original look of the game, Blood Rain 2 kind of holds up. It don't look too bad at all. Actually, it doesn't look bad at all. And it actually looks a little better than Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which is probably the inspiration that made this game. But yeah, um, the fact that it will be playable now is cool. It would be nice. It would be fucking nice if they were smart and were to release it on the PC. But, you know, you know, the decisions were made. But yeah, this is what we got coming and I guess we can't wait to see more. It looks decent enough and it seems to play as it's originally intended, but um, it's still got some of that, uh, how do you say, it's still a HD remaster and not a remake. So do not expect much, but expect what you've already seen, just slightly prettier and that's it. But my biggest gripe is this should have been a bundle collection, one and two, in one game. But these are decisions that they made. Maybe they need the money. Who knows? But moving forward, because it ain't much else to say there. Next on the docket, Overclock3D.net. Bro, a full truck of RTX graphics cards have been stolen in the U.S. Bro. They said that the MSRP of these GPUs go from $329 all the way up to $1959.99. This is insane and it blows my mind, but I feel like this is reporting on shit that happens on a regular. I mean, shipments, stuff happens to shipments a lot, but I feel like it's more prominent and obvious now because of the scalpers. And they're gonna be some, you know, people probably trying to buy resale and all of this, you know what I mean? And 
it's crazy um but yeah and for some reason the uh, <laughs> the people who wrote the article decided to be cheeky and they put a, a fast and furious <laughs> screenshot way back in 2001 um and if i remember right that was the scene where they were still in a bunch of vcrs so <laughs> uh yeah next on the docket ain't much else to be said on that so you know when the gpus resurface they'll most likely be sold underground and not seen in the public until like way later but anyway take two scraps hangar 13 game writes off 53 million dollars of development here on pushsquare.com yo we heard about i heard about this but the thing that pissed me off the most that it was some Twitter account decided to report false news about it, saying that um, Take Two has canceled development on a game that was in development for you know this many years, and it was reportedly Bully Two, and that was a fucking lie. So they just did it to get some clickbait, and um, most likely this Hangar Thirteen, whatever it may have been. I don't know if it might have been good or not. You know what I mean? Like, we haven't seen anything about it, heard anything about it. There's been no news released, and I don't think anybody knows what it's supposed to be. But uh, whatever it may be, it would be nice if that money and that team was not dissolved. Um, it would be nice if we could still keep that team, you know, employed and that they could work on something else, likely. Hopefully something that they could have fun with. Um, but anyway... That's the sad part in the whole, you know, summation of this uh, article. There's not much else to it, but uh, heart goes out to the devs, and hopefully they stay employed. Next thing on the docket, something that's pretty dope to me, and hopefully that it'll become something greater, which uh, on ha Halloween night, there was a trailer release for Blood One PS1 Demake, and it is playable. You can play it. It was made in the Unity engine. Um, but it only goes up until the Father Gas Coin boss fight, and it stops right there. It is not complete. You cannot play it in the emulator. It is not something that you can just burn and pop, pop into a PS1 or anything like that. Like it's it's not that type of game. It's literally a standalone uh, Unreal Engine made game, and the source code is completely released to the public. And we'll hope that somebody picks this up and does something with it. And aside from that, um, the trailer looks pretty dope. And I would like to actually fool around with this. So maybe one day. And if there's a project that is announced before we get around to playing it, then I would like to see them complete that project and do the full game. That'd be fucking sick. Um, otherwise, uh, that's pretty neat. Go ahead and check out the trailer yourselves. Also, speaking of A Soul's Born... Um, I know that the trailer for Elden Ring has dropped and the gameplay and whatnot, I know, and I have not seen it yet and I wanna see it on stream. So we need to pull it up on stream, y'all. Whoever's hearing this, if you're gonna be in the chat, I need you to remind me so we can watch this shit together so I can get my initial reaction. I don't know shit aside from the trailers that was released a few months ago. So. Please feel free to remind me, please. So I'll I'll stop playing right then and pull it up. But uh, yeah, um, hopefully, if I'm not in, in like the zone or doing something like intense or something. But yeah, that's the plan. Anywho's last thing on the docket for this week is the Mass Effect official Twitter decided to say, and I quote: "We have another in seven day surprise for you from the team working on the next Mass Effect. Thank you all for being the best fans in the world." And they posted a picture of basically some aircraft landed on a planet with a crashed meteorite in a crater. And it just says Mass Effect will continue. And that's amazing. So can't wait to see what we're going to get in this Mass Effect. I don't know if it's going to be 4 or 5, but Andromeda is now non-canon. So let's say Mass Effect 4. And we'll just have to wait and see. So let's get hyped for that. Might even do me a Mass Effect trilogy run one of these goddamn days, you know what I mean, on the stream. So we'll see. And uh, can't wait to see y'all there uh, when we continue the messenger. That's what we'll be doing for the rest of the stream. After we complete the messenger, likely we'll dive into another game or we'll just have some fun with some Apex. Uh, if y'all are willing to stop by and you are good at Apex, I don't need no baddies. 
We'll fool around in a little bit of normals maybe, and we'll see how it goes. And if the normals go well, we'll do ranked. Um, but other than that, uh, it's a solo queue game, mostly for me. But I don't mind playing with the peoples. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I Actually, it'd be better to test your skills in arenas. That way I'll know if you know when to push, when to hold back, when to stick to cover. And if you got the movement mechanics to keep up. That'd be nice to see and know. So yeah, um, it's gonna be iffy. I'm not too big on, I mean, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I'm trying not to be like, you know, elitist here. Cause I've seen some controller players that are actually good. So I don't mind having me a little bit of bot aim, you know what I'm saying, some, some auto aim on, on the squad. Uh, we'll just have to see. But anyway, uh, moving past that, yeah, that's the plans. We're going to see y'all Tuesday, uh, hopefully. And also, don't forget that um, this coming week, we have, we well, we've already, this whole month, rather, this month is going to be backlog and clear out the hard drive month. And I got some games that I have installed and intended to play before October got here, but it didn't really plan out that way. So what we're going to do is do be working on that all November. And then when December comes, we'll be doing some comfy Christmas stuff. And I'm going to start a whole round of things where we just come in and share Christmas stories. That's what I'd like to hear or see or read. So, yeah, because we're going to be showing some, you know, it's going to be real cozy. We're going to have a little layout for it and everything. Just get ready. All right. Uh, in the meantime, I won't give y'all all the details because I don't want to get y'all hopes up because hopefully things work out like we planned. Right now, we have a fall layout on the OBS and you want to come and see it. It's going to feel real cozy. Uh, and it's a little bit of Weeboo mix as well. So, you know how we do over there. So, y'all, remember to pierce the heaven. Ugh! Oh! <coughs> okay. Um. Oops. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Whew. don't don't try to podcast while eating candy um y'all remember to uh pierce to heaven stay good and um be the brightness in somebody's world for a change you never know you might need that to come back for you um and always remember the channel motto intentions are the most important actually ain't nothing but loud and words don't mean a damn thing don't, don't forget that the streams are every day of the week except for sundays and mondays we will be there. We will be hanging out. Hopefully, our our new start time might be around three o'clock, since we don't really see much of the uh, traffic at one. And I will be there. Um, we still might start earlier than that. I'm not sure, but things will have to be seen. Other than that, welcome back. We missed you. And uh, take care. Why am I having the hardest time closing out this episode? Anyway, get out of here. Go have some fun. And watch Squid Game, I guess. I can't believe I actually uh, agree with the people, but yeah, it's good. Anyway, get out. Appreciate you. Oh my God. Some bullshit.